this video is to show you how to use the equipment for experiment E2, membrane diffusion. The diffusion cells are kept here, and they look like this. You will be filling them with material, and then you'll be agitating them. We've got a plate agitator and a mechanical agitator here, and then you'll be analyzing the results of how fast material moved through the membrane, which is actually in the middle of this here. There's one compartment for one solution here, one compartment over there, and the membrane is in the middle. This is a little small and you can't see very much. Let's move to the board and talk about what happens inside the cell. The cell that you have contains a cation permeable membrane in the middle. This means that the anions aren't going to be able to get through. and You will be actually tracking the passage of metal cations through the membrane itself. I'm going to give an example using lithium, but you'll be using other metals as well. We start off with lithium chloride solution on one side of the membrane and the other side filled with hydrogen chloride hydrochloric acid. There is a concentration gradient between the two. The concentration of lithium is very high here, and the concentration gradient is, excuse me, concentration of lithium over here is zero. So there is a push to get lithium over this side. It will happen. It's cation permeable. So let's move a few of these lithium ions, and they make it over to this side of the membrane. Now that's a charge imbalance. You've got lots of more plus charges and negatives on this side. What will happen is the hydrogen ions will migrate in the opposite direction to maintain charge balance. We took three off. So there we are. And they will come over here. Now, in fact, there's also a charge Excuse me, there is also a concentration gradient between hydrogen ions over here and none over here. However, hydrogen being a very small cation, and also because hydrogen is part of the water molecule, means it can move very rapidly indeed. And so the diffusion of hydrogen in this direction is not the rate determining step. The principal transport medium that is happening here, the transport phenomenon that's happening here, is the lithium going to the other side. Now, <clears throat> how are you going to analyze this? Because the, all of the solutions are completely colorless. Um, however, we, while we can't analyze for lithium very easily, we can analyze for hydrogen ions very easily. Indeed, you just do an acid-base titration. So at the end of the diffusion time, you take the contents of this side of the cell and titrate it, and you will detect that there is some H+, there is some acid present. And that's how you're going to determine how much lithium, because it's a stoichiometric ratio, migrated through the membrane in the opposite direction. I've spoken about lithium. You will also be doing it with potassium, sodium, and indeed with other divalent ions, barium or magnesium, will also make it through this membrane. They won't travel at the same speed because the effective ionic radius is different. Um, if it's a small one, it may polarize and get a large hydration shell. That's what you're going to be investigating. You will find differences between the various different cations. Now, what we really want you to investigate is diffusion right across the membrane itself. If you just left the cell by itself sitting still, there would be other complicating factors. Because if we move a lithium over here, you've changed the concentration gradient, but there are other lithiums over here, and you'll have a difference in concentration just in the one cell. And so you put it in a mechanism which agitates it and essentially makes the liquid contents of both sides of the cell uniform, the, the concentration uh, uniform over the entire bulk of the material. And so the only phenomenon that you're observing 
is the actual gradation, the actual concentration gradient and diffusion across the membrane itself. So much for the theory of what we're doing. Let's go back to the instrument and do the practicalities. We've got several cells here, and you'll be using several at the same time. The first thing you're going to need to do is to condition the cell. That is, they've been sitting around, they haven't got anything much in them. And so for the first little while, you measure out about 10 mils, use a graduated cylinder of acid on one side, and then you close the cap and invert, open the cap, and put the metal, whether it's lithium chloride, sodium chloride, whatever, into the cell. Then you close it up, and you'll find just sitting them in a beaker like that is a good way to hold them vertical. Once they're tight, you don't need to mangle it. Once they're ready to go, then you put them in the agitator. We've got three cells here, and you can actually have more than one going at a time. And we've got multiple ways for them to be agitated. The first and the easiest one, actually, is this little rocking table. It's designed for blood labs, actually. You need to hold it in place just by using the elastics and push the switch. And that rocking motion is enough uh, to make sure that you've got uniform concentration gradients inside the cells themselves. If you're really getting bored, you can push on one corner. It'll go the other way, but it doesn't make any difference. The other agitation devices are right here, and they're a little louder and more enthusiastic. This instrument here is a rocker and an agitator. And once you've got your cells ready, there are two different kinds of movement available here. This one is actually a rocking arrangement. The cell sits right there, and there's a horseshoe-shaped arrangement with a thumb screw here. It slides over the top, place it over the center, and then tighten the screw to hold everything tight in place. The circular motion one is a little easier. You just pull the tight the bracket out, place the cell in place, and then the springs will hold it. Now, because this is a moving item, we need to uh, protect us from it rather than pinch hazards. So the lucite doors close, and there's an interlock there. And until the doors are closed, the um, agitator will not work. Now that we're ready to go, you turn the machine on, and you push the start. And away we go. And you do that for the appropriate amount of time. And when you're done, push stop, turn the motor off, and then you can open the doors and remove your cells. You will do that conditioning a couple of times, and when you are finished with that, you just discard the salt solution and acid. However, once you're ready to do an experimental run, you put an appropriate amount, you measure it out by pipette this time, into the cell, first of all acid, and then the metal, and then put it onto the agitation device for the appropriate amount of time. Some runs will be five minutes, some will be 10, some will be 12. Um, you will do this according to the protocol. Once you take it off the agitation device, put it in with the acid side down and the metal side up, open the lid, and pour the contents directly into a beaker. That is going to be what you titrate and you add phenolphthalein and titrate this with sodium hydroxide. And you will discover how much acid made it into the metal compartment, and therefore how much metal diffused in the opposite direction. That is essentially all there is to this experiment. You will be doing it several times at different timed intervals. 
the only critical movement that needs to happen is when you've been doing an actual run for a certain period of time, take the cell off the agitation device, open the lid, and pour the contents of the metal cell, which will have some acid into it, as soon as you can. Because even though it's not on the agitation device, diffusion is still happening. So you need to stop that process as close to the time of five minutes or seven minutes or whatever it is as you can. In terms of cleanup, all of these solutions can go down the sink with lots of running water. Make sure that you wash these out and they are stored back in the drawer. And that's how you do experiment E2, which is diffusion through a membrane.